Good evening. I'd like to, um, to start by, by welcoming you all here tonight and thanking you for coming out to this event to commemorate the lives of um, the murdered hostages who were recovered over the weekend. I'd like to start by acknowledging some leaders of, the, of our parliament here with us today, Steve Dimopoulos, representing the Premier, the Minister for um, Tourism, Major Events and uh, Sport and Environment, and David Southwick, the leader of the, uh, the Deputy Leader of the Liberal Party here in Victoria, and other distinguished guests, community leaders, welcome. If the 331 days that have passed since October 7 aren't enough to emphasise the awful reality of the battle in which Israel finds itself, let's consider the 331 nights that have also passed. 331 nights where the families of hostages being cruelly held in Gaza have not slept. 331 nights where the families of more than 1,200 victims of the attacks on that fateful day have lain awake, grieving for the loved ones as they contend with the pain of their loss. And 330 nights for the hostages themselves, dwelling in barbaric conditions, subject to their captors' cruelty. 331 nights, wondering whether the next day would see their release or their demise. And tragically, for Carmel Gat, Eden Shalmi, Hirsch Goldberg Pauline, Alexander Lobano, Almog Salusi and Ori Danino Zikorani Bracha. Them and their families, there are no further nights, no further days, no further hope to be re reunited with their loved ones. Murdered in cold blood by Hamas. If we believe the rhetoric of others who claim to be for human rights and freedom, who shamelessly contend that murder, rape, and wholesale slaughter are legitimate acts of resistance, then we might be understandably confused. But we know very well who is Israel's enemy and who is the enemy of the Jewish people. Led by Iran, their proxies, Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis, these, they have amply demonstrated how much they care for human rights. Murdering captives in cold blood is surely a loathsome, immoral war crime, no matter, what, no matter what one's perspective on the current conflict is. And again, the human rights activists, the students on our university campuses, and those from other communities respond to the latest atrocity with silence. A silence that exposes their hypocrisy and confirms their support for anti-Semitic terrorism and its unspeakably evil outcomes. When addressing the Democratic National Convention in Chicago last month, the parents of Hirsch Goldberg, Pauline, and Zichon Oliveira said, There is a surplus of agony on all sides of the tra tragic conflict in the Middle East. In a competition of pain, there are no winners. In our Jewish tradition, we say, Kol Adam Olam Umla'o, every person is an entire universe. We must save all these universes. In an inflamed Middle East, we know the one thing that can most immediately release pressure and bring calm to the entire region, a deal that brings this diverse group of 109, now 103, hostages home and ends the suffering of the innocent civilians <laughs> in Gaza. The time is now. End quote. Our Jewish lives in Australia, in Melbourne, have irreversibly changed since October 7. Our grief is raw, our sorrow overflows, and our determination to maintain our resilience and decorum in the wake of frightful and growing anti-Semitism remains firm. Also firm is our commitment to stand by and with Israel during this time, and indeed at all times. We stand with the people, we stand with the state, and we stand with the government as they collectively battle Hamas in order to remove them from having any further influence in the region. And while we stand in the government, we also hear the voices of the hundreds of thousands of Israelis who gathered over the weekend to demand an immediate deal to release the remaining hostages, inflamed by the fact that the hostages were murdered only in the last few days 
an eventuality that may not have occurred had a deal been finalised. <coughs> I call on the government of Israel to redouble its efforts and do whatever it takes to bring the hostages home today. This can and must be the chief priority for the government. Kol Yisrael Avim Zelazeh. All of Israel is responsible for one another. We too, here in Melbourne, are responsible for the hostages. We too are responsible for making our voices heard. We also suffer 331 sleepless nights and anxious days as we stay glued to our devices, following the latest news, communicating with friends and family here in Israel and elsewhere. We also hope that tonight is the last night we experience this nightmare. I joined with the editorial of this morning's Jerusalem Post that read, We are sorry we could, do not, we could not do more to get you out. We are sorry that the words we have written for 10 months have failed to spur our politicians into action. We are sorry you will never again get to spend time with your families. These were not just six individuals, the Post goes on to say. They were part of our collective family and their loss diminishes us all. We must carry the weight of this failure with us, allowing it to guide our actions in the future, ensuring that no family ever has to endure this kind of pain again. We owe it to them to remember their names, to honour their lives, and to learn from the silence and that fills the space they once occupied. To their families, the editorial concludes, no words can heal the wounds left by this tragedy, but please know that their lives will not be forgotten. We will carry their memory forward, a solemn reminder of the price we pay when we fail to protect our own. We look forward to brighter days ahead. We look forward to the next story about the hostages telling how they all returned home to their loved ones, to their people, to their state, to the only Jewish homeland in the world. This is the way we honour the lives of the 30 or so hostages who we know have perished at the hands of Hamas. This is how we honour our commitment to the State of Israel and to the Jewish world. And to the families of the hostages still in captivity, we draw with them in fervent hope that they will be home for Shabbat this week. And for the families of the hostages we've lost, we mourn with you and we grieve with you. For even in death, we are all responsible for one another. Yehid.